Good morning all. My name is Shushrut and I'm joining you from our LB offices. I hope you all had a lovely weekend. Uh, the past week has been quite a busy week. Uh, it's been like a storm from Wednesday. And then we had uh, the uh, Fed FOMC. Then on Thursday we had uh, the Bank of England followed on by Friday on uh, the F uh, sorry the NFP. So I'll come to it. But before I start, as always, uh, please, if you would like to get in touch with us, uh, there are some numbers that are displayed on the screen. You can contact us and our customer service agents would be happy to help you. Uh, you can also go on our website, uh, www.alb.com, where you can find all the information uh, regarding our company or the products that we offer. So. Uh, please feel free and if you have any question as well there is also the chat option box that's on the right hand side corner uh, so you can uh, chat with any of our customer service agents as well uh, there we are available 24 hours five days a week so yes so if you need anything just feel free to give us a call also before I start uh, please uh, read the legal disclaimer as uh, a trading in financial ha assets has got inherent risk attached to it so if you would like uh, to uh, trade on the financial market uh, i would really uh, suggest you to uh, see the pros and cons uh, and the risk attached to it so before i start today's analysis i just want to uh, take your attention to the calendar economic calendar uh, for this week it will be a pretty much quiet week, week as you can see not many major data coming out uh, on the uh, first few days on monday we have uh, at four o'clock uh, cet european time we have the ism non-manufacturing pmi from the us uh, on tuesday we have uh, the balance of trade from australia and on Wednesday, uh, there, as I said, it's, it's pretty much quite weak. Not much important, uh, not many important news that would be coming out uh, uh, according to, uh, like that will really affect the market. And on Friday, there are some uh, uh, some major important news, like uh, uh, like we have the RBA. Uh, monetary policy so that would be anyone trading the aussie uh, dollar or uh, would be quite important for them uh, then we have the chinese inflation uh, also we have the german uh, balance of trade on friday followed by the uh, uk balance of trade the gdp growth quarter on quarter and uh, year on year uh, yeah that's kind of it so it, as you can see it's pretty quiet uh, week not like last week uh, so these are the scheduled news that have to uh, that will be coming out but if I see anything that uh, comes out in the middle of the week I would obviously notify all of you so as you all know that uh, FOMC I just will do a, a bit of recap like how the week has been uh, uh, the last week has been so Fed has cut 25 basis, basis point uh, of, uh, of their interest rate on Wednesday. Uh, we saw kind of a good volatility in the market after uh, the Fed came out with the news. Uh, but again, on and then on Thursday, which the, there was a Bank of England, which was kind of uh, non-event, though it was quite a major uh, news but it turned out to be a non even followed by the nfp which came uh, mixed like it was neither too good it's like mixed with, with good and bad data uh, with uh, with uh, with the nfp but and end of the day it was mrs trump uh, whose tweets did really shake up the market as always so i think since trump did not get what he wanted uh, from the fed he just made his own way of, uh, uh, of of getting what he wants by tweeting and, and the market did react quite a lot because uh, 
the main focus of the market at the moment is is the trade uh, the trade deal. Uh, it's 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 on the topmost priority of of the market, and which did not actually turn out to be good. Uh, so. So the stocks slid in Europe alongside uh, U.S. equity futures, tracking the biggest sell-off in Asian shares since March, as concern escalated about the U.S.-China trade war. Treasuries rallied with the yen as traders bid up uh, heaven assets. Decline in mining and tech shares led the stocks Europe 600 lower, and the S&P 500 index futures slumped as much as 1.3 percent uh, before easing. China's yuan weakened uh, beyond seven uh, per dollar, a uh, level long seen by investors as a line in the sand of countries' policymakers. Shares slumped as much as 3.1% in Hong Kong, where rising unrest in the streets is adding to the market turmoil. Uh, equities took another leg lower, uh, where Bloomberg reported that China has asked state purchasers to hold imports of American agriculture products. So that made the gold advance and attain uh, advance. I think the gold is like the clear winner. I just put the gold chart on on the screen. As you can see, it's I can see it's the clear, clear, clear winner at the moment in all the asset classes, and uh, that's that's because all the investors are now going uh, to to the safe havens. Uh, being gold being uh, one of the uh, one of them. Uh, the 10-year treasury yields dropped to their lowest since October 2016. Uh, Chinese stocks saw more than modest de decline uh, than the rest of the region amid speculation poli about policymakers may boost stimulus as the trade war escalates. Uh, the yuan's drop was the biggest since August 2015 when official announced surprise devaluation that roiled up global markets. Uh, the uh, bank, the People's Bank of China, said that it is able to keep the currency stable at a reasonable level, and and that broke above seven per dollar became of trade uh, protectionism to at the moment. Uh, eyes may now turn to any reaction by President Donald Trump. So I'll be keeping an eye on his Twitter handle, Mr. Trump's what, if anything, uh, that he might tweet uh, regarding. Uh, this new development so this was pretty much from the asian markets uh, we now moving to the uk market uh, the pound it a plunge uh, also plunged quite a bit last week uh, the pound fell, uh, fell more than eight percent in uh, since may a drop that accelerated since prime minister uh, boris johnson declared that uk would leave the European Union on October uh, 31st with or without a trade deal between between the EU. A no deal exit would con inflict huge damage on the UK economy. Bank of England Governor Mark Carney on Thursday repeated the warnings uh, and the prospect has driven significant underperf underperformance in the UK equities and real estate and saddled British UK companies looking to borrow overseas with a Brexit premium. After Sterling's latest sludge lower, however, some uh, managers with long horizons are taking a second look and concluding that, at least on paper, some British assets look too cheap to ignore. Also tempting is the prospect of Sterling rally if no deal is averted. Reuters poll show it could bounce to 136. A weaker pound makes it cheaper for overseas investors holding other currencies to buy British assets. It can also provide UK-based fund managers with incentive to take uh, profits on foreign holdings and uh, get the cash. Cheap valuation aside, there is a belief in some quarters of the UK economy uh, should be able to weather the Brexit as long as a uh, no deal is averted. Positive uh, include low unemployment, resilient, con resilient consumer spending and Johnson's promise for more investments. So, if pound if sorry if uh, uk gets a deal any kind of deal uh, uh, from the eu the pound might uh, just bounce back from its lows uh, that's how it seems at the moment but at the moment it broke the lows of uh, 
that we saw on Brex uh, the day Brexit day, and it uh, it looks that it might really uh, test the lows back from 2012, uh, which was at 118. So if 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 UK goes out with uh, no deal, I think uh, pound will surge to the 118 level, but till now it's not sure that's how and and it just really reflects on on the uk uh, on sorry on the pound and also on the uk uh, index uh, the FTSE uh, amidst the global turmoil that has been seen because everywhere there's uh, there's everywhere there's kind of uh, uncertainty regarding the china and us trade war also how uk gonna leave the eu also there is some political uh, turmoil in japan and now China uh, devaluing it's the yuan and also asked uh, the private companies, Chinese companies to to uh, withhold any kind of import imports from the uh, U.S. So uh, this this kind of all this scenario that has been play, playing out at the moment is all will also hurt uh, the U.K. economy and the pound uh, with their current uh brexit issue that they're having boris johnson uh, also uh added that he will be uh, putting uh, uh putting more spending on on the uk healthcare uh johnson has dramatically boosted public spending since taking office a few speculation that uk prime minister is pre pre uh, preparing not only for brexit by 31st but a general election as well the two are likely to be linked either before or after the UK leaves the European Union. Uh, on Monday, Johnson in office uh, less than two weeks travelled to Lincolnshire, Eastern England uh, to lay out details of its uh, £1.8 billion uh, boost uh, for the National Health Service, delivering uh, what he has promised uh, back in 2016 on his uh, Brexit campaign. Uh, so uh, till, till this time, he is trying to keep uh, the promises that he had made back in 2016 but it, the matter of the fact is how long this can be can be sustained if there is a, if no deal if there is a no deal and uh, so we have to really see how pound uh, reacts in, 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 in the in the coming uh, coming days so uh, the main day being on, uh, we'll be looking at on Thursday when the inflation, ca sorry, the GDP from uh, UK comes out, uh, the report uh, which will be called quarter on quarter and uh, year on year. So I think this would be quite an important uh, uh, news, economic event for, for the pound uh, and how it's going to be reacting in the future. Uh, we have seen also drop in uh, the oil prices uh, because of this US-China uh, trade spat. So uh, before uh, we had this one month kind of truce between the US and China, uh, we saw uh, the oil uh, surging, the, oil, the prices of oil surging, but now again uh, uh, from the time that uh, uh, this truce has ended uh, now formally uh, we have seen quite sharp drop from uh, from the levels that we have seen about $65 it was and now it's trading at 61 so uh, on Thursday as far as I remember uh, the oil dropped uh, very sharply like $3 in a matter of uh, maybe uh, 45 minutes after Trump's uh, tweet came uh, so I'll be uh, just talking about the uh, levels that I'm looking at in in like in few minutes. Uh, so this is kind of it from from the news point of view. I would be really looking at uh, uh, Mrs. Trump's Twitter handle, and I would suggest you guys if you are uh, trading either of the major uh, uh, currency pairs or uh, uh, the major index. So it's gonna uh, so. Trump's tweets would be quite important because the market would be now uh, looking at how Trump responds after uh, the Chinese stance uh, 
on uh, Monday. So So I'll start with the the euro USD at the moment. Uh, so I'm, I have uh, a bias uh, for the euro USD bullish for the intraday, uh, as we have seen on Friday and uh, from Thursday evening. Friday the euro has been steadily uh, getting back up, uh, and it has uh, at the time now I'm speaking to you. It's looking quite strong. So my my i'll be looking to go for a long at 100 uh, sorry 11127 uh, 112 uh, uh, one which looks quite a, a good good uh, support for the euro uh, from the past so after it broke uh, today in the morning i think it looks good so if it falls back there i think i would go for a long out there a stop below just uh, this level here which which is also there is also the 50 day moving average and the target I will be targeting like 111 and 96 uh, so uh, Euro USD I'll be looking for a long uh, on the uh, Jap USD Japanese yen I would be looking uh, for a short position uh, below 106.65 uh, with targets at 105 spot 30 and uh, any kind of extension downwards uh, alternatively if I see a break uh, above 106.65 uh, I might go with a long on a pullback but uh, at the moment my bias would be a kind of uh, bearish on the US JPY uh, on GBP though it looks on an intraday though on a because this is quite tricky on the GBP at the moment it looks a good place to go long because uh, it kind of tested the lows at 121 and then again uh, it's kind of looking so if I so on a CF side I would like to see a good bullish candle out here maybe two three so that i get a confirmation of of uh, what i am thinking is right otherwise i would either look uh, for the pound to break the 120 and go short here uh, which we might not see today but not any kind of short trade that i would be looking for uh, in pound so if if this level the market holds this level i would be kind of can go for a long uh, with a very tight stop maybe if I go uh, uh, long from kind of here 120 121 but my stop would be very tight about 91 between 90 60 to 70 pips and but I would be looking so uh, to be honest I am not very comfortable with pound today so I wouldn't be able to give you much so if you see something please be careful on the pound I'm not seeing any kind of uh, clear uh, clear uh, sign to go on a trade uh, with pound uh, on gold uh, I think it is uh, my I have I've been like we from L we have been quite bit bullish and uh, and I think it, it has got uh, much more room to go up maybe test the 1500s uh, because there are like three reasons that I have mainly being uh, as we have seen before like when it, uh, the 1346 in gold has been quite a resistance that you have seen that the market was not able to uh, break it for a long time but uh, uh, sorry 1370 this level here 1360 so between 65 and 70 but when it uh, it's been trying to break from the start of this year so if you even if you go to november 2017 you can see uh, this has been so quite a big so this my car cursor is there it's been quite a big level so once it broke uh, this level uh, i was pretty much on the bullish bullish stance and on further this us china trade what that has been going on I think gold would be the number one uh, uh, 
safe haven for all the investors to go through as uh, a go to and which which uh, will drive the gold prices uh, much higher so for me uh, i would say along from uh, 1440 uh, looks good uh, with, uh, because the RS, the RSI is also bullish and uh, it, it, it looks like it will be we can see the further upside so a 1440 between 1440 and 42 it's a good long and uh, we can target between uh, 1465 and 1470 and if you would like to be on my side I would say 1500 we can surely see uh, by by the end of the week, if 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 goal goal if uh, Mr. Trump comes out with these kinds of tweets uh, on oil, my preference would be a uh, short uh, on on the crude WTI uh, just below 55 uh, 85, which is the pivot with targets uh, at 54.75 and 54.15 in and any kind of extension uh, downward. Uh, so be careful because tomorrow there is also uh, the I'm oh sorry on Wednesday there is the inventory data. So before that, I would really uh, uh, see oil to test more lows than to go back up high uh, before the inventory data from the US that comes out. So yeah, short from the pivot looks very nice. Uh, would be a safe trade. As you can also see, there's also the 50-day moving average on the hourly time frame and all, also on the 4-hourly time frame. So this is a good place to trade and as you can see after this two huge uh, bearish candle that we have seen on oil on Thursday evening. So, so any kind of uh, retracement backup would be a good chance to short on, uh, on the oil. So yeah, that will be it from me uh, for today. I hope to join you tomorrow in the morning. Uh, please, again, uh, be careful because the market looks uh, quite a bit tricky uh, than it usually is. So before I uh, sign off, uh, just if you want to get in touch with us again, uh, you can call us on the displayed numbers or else you can chat with any of our customer service agents. Uh, we are available 24 uh, hours, 5 days a week from Monday to Friday. Uh, have a lovely week ahead and all the best uh, for today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh,